Let's just say I was not ready for the new year. This is the slowest upload in history. But I'm still excited! Do I feel motivated? No. Do I wish I was? Absolutely, because I already have things I want to do this year. The first week after the holidays, I might as well just go back to sleep. That was the mood. But I want to finish editing my videos and do my paintings and all that jazz. And I think it would be good if I figured out a plan for like my schedule and routines. Besides planning, I wanted to regain energy for the year ahead with experiences that would inspire me. Let's go see the light! Setting myself up for success starts with defining what I really want out of my days. It can be easy to rush into things, floating on our grand vision of the future. So I make an effort to clarify this and root myself in present moments. For me, success in this year will come from honesty, the courage to share where I'm going in life, settling into routines that encourage my creativity, and from genuinely being happy with how my life looks on any regular day. Look how purple the sky is. <laughs> It's a beautiful rainy day to go shopping. Let's turn the truck pee on. During any period of rest, I try to recharge by going with the flow of things around me. Great memories and inspiration can come from the unexpected, even running errands for someone else. I remind myself to be like a child who sees everything as an opportunity for adventure and curiosity. I want this big one. What is this? Oh, it's Bird of Paradise. This is my favorite. Oh, $12. No, thank you. I'm too cheap. <laughs> I want the whole set. Oh, oh, look at this. There is a lot of pressure during the start of a year to accomplish big goals and stay focused, but only you get to decide how to build a strong foundation for what's to come. I got new books, but these ones are for learning purposes, clearly. I also had work to get done before I could begin my year. Editing videos from the previous month, planning out new routines, and updating my studio space. Trying to figure out the best way to make this more aesthetic. I want to put some of my paintings on shelves over there. I'm also hoping to get like a lantern. With a rough plan of how we wanted the space to feel, Yvonne and I got ready to paint the walls first. I knew that later in the year when responsibilities poured in, that it would be hard to find the time for learning the new skills I needed to make content. I also wanted to figure out how long it would take and how it would fit into my practice as an artist. Artist. I reflected on these questions a lot. I find that understanding why and how I want to create things is just as important as doing them. It's similar to how the right environment can improve productivity or mindset. I think the mental home for our ideas and the physical home for our work can always be more intentional. I just finished uploading another video, which feels good. So I'm going to take an hour or so to help clean up this space so we have enough room to continue painting the wall over here. Look at that progress. All white now compared to the gray it was before. This has its first layer. And check out my new slippers. Boom, boom. I eventually helped with the painting, even if I wasn't great at it. Yvonne was willing to fix the mistakes, and it ended up being more relaxing than I expected. Sometimes physical, mundane tasks can be calming when you're overwhelmed. Pancho, what do you think of the new paint color? It's green. It feels really airy and spacious and my eyes go straight to the windows, which is something that I love. And I think it'll help me make everything feel more cohesive, even though we have two workspaces. And I originally painted this orange. That's going to change. My new color inspiration is this book cover. It's a work in progress. Yeah, we can do it from just a little hole from the 
You mean put this in the ceiling? Do like a warm white, neutral, cool white, and a really cool white. Okay, let's change the thing. Redoing the colors again. We are gonna go get some shelves to go above here, get some better storage for these guys. The cart is freshly painted, it's kind of like a minty white. Are you coming to IKEA with us? No. Are you addicted to Pedialyte? I'm guilty of keeping a lot of my old paintings in a box, tucked under the couch, away from sight. But I feel a lot more inspired when I can see some of my favorite or more recent pieces every day. Just looking at what I've made can give me an idea for a new painting or help me stay consistent. And maybe if I treat my work in a special way, I can go into the next projects with more care and self-respect towards what I create. Oh, you look so cute in the background. The studio's ready. My videos are out from last year. I get to start painting, so I'm happy. Are you ready for the tour? Let's look at it. Don't look at that. It's not perfect right now. And Elon put up a shelf for me. Also, he made this like the cleanest lamp hanging I've ever seen. Do you see a cord? I don't see a cord. And this is from my amazing sister Maggie. We have light. Oh, I love that. And all the new paints are hung up. Since I'm gonna be using these more often, I'm glad they're right next to me. I still have all the others. I will use them for other projects that are not going to waste. <laughs> this is cute. Maria, how is it going? And when are you coming home? How are your paintings going? And how is Ivan? <laughs> Hope you like the card. Love you from Luca. The dog man picture is for Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> Wait, it gets better. <laughs> Dang, you don't get a card like that every day in the mail. <laughs> Finally, I was ready to bring in the new year and get to work. I felt confident in my vision for the future, rested, and excited to work in a space that inspires me. But this is only the beginning of long hours that will be spent here. I selected the reference images I need for the next few months, the sizes they'll be, and what images to save for sketches. With that, I was ready to begin, to start building a sustainable routine and mission for myself in 2023. Built on intentional curiosity and time, I gave myself to grow instead of forcing things to be right instantly. It's taken several years to get to this point of having a studio I love, and a lot of unpredictability along the way. I've spent my fair share of time working on the kitchen table in my childhood home, in empty classrooms, garages, or on the floor when I just needed space. I never felt settled or consistent. Each painting meant starting over in a new spot or constantly solving problems in my environment. And while I didn't let that stop me, I'm happy to finally have some peace going into this year. I also included some shots of Yvonne's workspace in case anything he's done with the studio inspires you. I always find it interesting to know how others set up and use their own space. And I'm sure this room will change over time, and more frequently be a mess than not. But as long as I keep a few things around me that make me inspired, like books, old art, and good lighting, then it will always be okay. If you are planning on updating your own creative corners and studios, I highly suggest figuring out the few things that will go a long way in improving your work. Figure out how much light you need, where supplies can be accessible, and what you want to see while you're working. If you have a question about this space, Anything I purchased or used, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. 
I hope this video inspired you in some way or at least made you feel a little better about starting slow and taking the time you need to prepare and rest.